Texas Outsiders out of town. Uh, the meals tax, people from outside of town, other fees and things. So other people are benefiting from this stormwater stabilization. And it seems as though they ought to go ahead and cough in a little bit by making the city general fund pay for some of it. Uh, the other one is, uh, did anybody ever consider outside outsourcing for catch basin maintenance? I've seen a spade at some point when I traveled up and down Route 91 where there weren't state trucks sucking out the storm drains, there were private companies. And if we ever done a cost-benefit analysis to see if we could get the storm catch basins cleaned out by a private company cheaper than we could hire our own people and our own machinery and our own capital expenses and health benefits and retirement benefits and all those things that go along. And the other thing that was disturbing was the act that the fact that people weren't too eager about bonding things. It seems like we're going to collect the money and pay for it outright. And somebody dropped the uh, $20 million pump station on there as an example. Do we really want to pay for things outright when we can pay for them over time with cheaper dollars? And just as an example of that, we're paying off the JFK uh, bond in uh, 1993. That's when we bonded it. And uh, that's, we're paying, uh, I think a dollar today is worth 62 cents. So we're getting a bargain on bonding things out for 20 years because we're paying them off in cheaper dollars. So the idea of collecting the money and then spitting it all out at once is kind of interesting. Anyway, you got your work cut out for you on this one. And I think that the inequities in home size, home value, are really going to meet some resistance. For a $800,000 house is paying the same fee as a $150,000 house. Yeah, and I know that there's something about credits. And that was, that's just an absolute nightmare in my mind. Just from the examples at that meeting that people were popping up with, I live on a sandbank, I do this, I do that, I do this, I do that. All right, one guy's sandbank is the next guy's sump pump. All right, my neighbor's got a, a retention pond. Where's that water going? It's going in my basement. It doesn't disappear. And all of a sudden, I have a problem. Thank so, you very much. I would anyway, that's my, you, my two yep. minutes and two cents for what it's worth. I want to encourage you for the information that relates to the city council that you share your thoughts with them as well. That would be really quick. Well, I don't know where this is. I don't think they're going to deal with it. It's going to bounce it back to you. No, this is the bounce back to us, wouldn't you say? Yeah. So mean, there's an election coming up. They're going to be very, very cautious about what they do. Eh. <laughs> Mayor's so, running unopposed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Terry, I just want to note for the record that this is being filmed by Minnie Audgers for North Street Neighborhood Association. Okay. Any comments from staff to the public comments? None. Would you? I said none. Oh, none. None. I just didn't understand the word. Okay. Um, any motion to take anything out of order? Do we need? We want to. Go right through. Uh, I wonder if we should take storm water flood control update on the border. Is that my dirty team? You made him wait last time. <laughs> I move that we take the storm flood control update uh, next on the agenda. Second, right? <clears throat> so last week we had a meeting at JFK. It was somewhat well attended. I think there was probably close to 75, if not 100 people there. Um, a number of commenters and questioners at the end of it. Uh, out of that, uh, Doug and Jim and Terry, uh, myself included, have been working on an ordinance, and that's what you have in front of you tonight, is the ordinance that we're proposing to go to City Council next week to start the discussion process. So by this going to City Council next week, they'll probably immediately refer it down to subcommittees for review mm -hmm. and discussion. We're really trying to get this out of the DPW Board of Public Works Court into the the public organization where it belongs mm -hmm. for discussion purposes. So um, this is a nine-page ordinance. If I recall the numbers right, nine pages. Mm -hmm. um, Alan Seawald does have a copy of it at this point. We haven't heard back from him. 
So anything that you wish to recommend or vote or give to the city council, if you do so tonight, would be also incorporating Alan uh, Seawald's legal lease work into it also. Um, before I pass it to the rest of the board for comments and questions, I just want to note that Michael Parsons made um, a couple of uh, comments on page one. Um, he wanted to add on the fourth line down under purpose. Everybody there with you? Did everybody first see Michael's comments? No, I, okay. no, I saw that he had, had an email. Comment, okay, so on the fourth line down, he said, um, from time to time be appropriated or obtained through grants and low interest loans. And I thought that was a good addition. Is everybody in agreement with that? Should we, we need to put it to a vote or can we just have a discussion? Consensus. Well, it's funny you mentioned that. That was the one thing I really wanted to talk more about uh, was other revenue. What other revenue? And I, I started thinking, that as, as Mr. Rizowski was saying, that um, uh, who does benefit from flood control in the city of Northampton? And, um, you know, the Army Corps of Engineers designed and paid for the flood control system that we had initially. And so, yes, we do benefit from it. Um, but, for instance, what if there was a major disaster that I think failed? The city of Northampton got wiped out. Is the state and the federal government going to walk away? I doubt it. I think there would probably be some grants and monies that would come in to sort of put us back together. The flip side of that is I think they would also recognize the need that with this kind of infrastructure, since we're one community out of how many in the state that have these things? Not that many, right? 30? Something like that? That there might be grants that would come in advance if we had to do a major project mm -hmm. related to flood control. So I was thinking, I suppose there might be other funding sources for this? There are some funding sources, but they can't be associated with maintenance and upkeep of existing facilities. Right. So they're typically something that you're installing or not upgrading, but doing that greatly enhances the flood control facility itself. Right. So if we were to replace the pumps in kind, uh, 150,000 gallons a minute for the three pumps running, I don't think that's because we haven't done anything. If we are upgrading to 500,000 gallons a minute pumps and doing X, Y, Z and doing a bunch of things to en enhance it and make it, um, uh, I guess, more, uh, I should say user friendly, but, um, you know, just more uh, reliable. Reliable. Or, or That could be covered under a FEMA pre-disaster grant. Yeah, what I was thinking that, that I think would probably fall into the category that you're talking about would be to um, increase its capacity. Because new studies show that, oh, under the probable maximum flood, this this pump station cannot handle yeah. the maximum flow. Well, the other thing, too, is that when this pump station was designed, it was done with runoff coefficients in the way the city looked 70-plus years ago. That's another Not topic. today. Yeah, it's, that's right. This so is, things have changed. So the first thing that you would want to do with that, if we were to undertake something with the flood control facility, the pump station, is to do a drainage analysis study yeah. just to see what's changed. And maybe we do have to go to... 500 gallon, 1,000 gallon a minute pumps or 300,000 gallon a minute pumps. And now that's kind of a pre preliminary engineering work that needs to be done in it's advance of that. Exactly what I was thinking as I was looking at all this thing. And the uh, <coughs> other side going outside the neighborhood, so to speak, the same thing has happened all the way up to Canada with, along the Connecticut River. So what is, what happens with a PMP event to the Connecticut River? It's a PMP event. Probable maximum precipitation oh. event. So, is the are the flood protection levees high enough to handle some future maximum storm because of the runoff from Vermont, everything upstream? Well, the other thing too is you have all these flood control facilities on the river now, and yes. what if they do a big release? Yeah, those are some things that we can't control that come down exactly. here. Exactly. So, but um. You know, there are FEMA grants out there. In fact, because of Hurricane Sandy, mm -hmm. they've actually started to allow to have study work done in advance of construction for these grants. So this is something, a new twist they did this year for the first time that I saw. Right. And I floated the idea past the Army Corps uh, through MEMA, whether or not, you know, doing this drainage evaluation would be something that would qualify. And they said, absolutely, but 
you have to commit to construction too. So that and that's the gray area is how are we going to fund construction of something major down at that facility, which I can't commit to at that point. So we've had the conversation with NEMA about NEMA is the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency. So we've had that conversation. Um, currently, as you know, we've applied for three FEMA grants in the past, one for the upper Roberts Meadow Reservoir, one for the slope erosion on Roberts Meadow Brook mm -hmm. below Mizani Beach, and the River Road Retaining Wall. And from all indications that we should be seeing the funds released for the latter of the two projects. The dam one is still up in the air, what's going to happen with it? So, yeah. you know, as far as changing the language, we are seeking what we can for grants, but they're very limited. And so what happens when, um, whenever the state or the federal government declares an emergency, the state gets a pool of money, and all 351 communities across the street, street of the state can compete for this mitigation money. It comes in blocks of $5 million to $20 million, depending on the size of the right. previous emergency. Right. So the funding source is never constant, right. and you have 351 people for towns, communities, competing for it. Right. <clears throat> um, when the task force was talking about potential revenue sources, one of the things that, well, we made several, point, several points. One is we're never going to stop looking for new money. Right. And um, um, but that part of the problem with um, with bonding or um, overrides or or reliance on grants is, is as as Ned pointed out, there's no guarantee that they're going to be there, and that and that one of the goals, therefore, of the task force was to create a dedicated and con and constant revenue stream on which we could draw. Right. Um, the second point, and I don't know if it really gets to your question because I'm not sure I fully understand it, but when the Army Corps gave their presentation, was that the Ward 5? Ward 3. Ward 3. Um, one of the things that, this is how I understand the, 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 the levy system model as they see it, which is we came in, we built it for you, we left it to you to administer. Um, that requires you to maintain certain standards of, of operation and maintenance. And that um, in the event, assuming that you do that, that you that you maintain that standard, in the event of a catastrophic failure of the system, they would be the ones who replace the system. So the federal government is committed to doing that. That doesn't speak to my mind as I think about it now to what, what that would mean with regard to the downtown area and damage that was done to that. But 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 what I heard them saying was Anything that happens to the levy system that we built that you maintained, we will we will we will put that back in place. Ned, just need to clarify that. So what happens is that we are considered to be minimally acceptable standard right now. If we drop to unacceptable, that funding mechanism disappears to fix damages during a flood event. So it's critical that we keep this standard or go to the next standard up, which is satisfactory. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> <laughs> if, it, if we were to see a deterioration in our, in our quality of our system, how long are we talking? One year, or several years, for them to decertify? To create a condition they would decertify, or do they issue a warning? Or? Right now, we have regular inspection reports <coughs> that come out from the Army Corps. They used to be done every other year. They still done? Are they yearly now? I think they're every two yearly yeah. now. So. They come out and they've actually done a huge report on our system. Uh, Watermark Industries, I think, did the work for it. And it's a thick document for both the Mill River Diversion and the Connecticut River Levy System and work that needs to get done and looked at. And they've made a series of uh, kind of demands what they want to see done. And obviously, we're having trouble finding the funding mechanisms to get that work done. Uh, you did approve the contract, I believe, the last board meeting or so. Like 195000 Yeah, for the Mill River Diversion work, which only covers part of the work to be done. There's still the engineering studies that the Army Corps has asked that we do, and then any upgrades to flood control that come from those engineering studies. What happens if they find out that the entire levee system is not stable during a seismic event? What are we going to have to do to upgrade that so it won't fail during an earthquake? This is, a, this is what they're looking for. These are their modern standards they want us to bring us up to. And this is the whole thing that's happened with the dam safety program. It's very similar to that. They have new standards they want us to achieve on these dams that currently we're not there yet. So this is why we're looking at that. I think it was a multi-million dollar investment into our 
surface water infrastructure in the future, based on these reports that come out. So, but there there is a chance that let's say um, uh, from these reports they find out that you know we need to do a bunch of work and if we don't get it done they can decertify our levee system, and what happens then is that the hundred year flood plane disappears. It actually comes into the city and doesn't stay at the flood control facility, and it forces all the businesses and homeowners in that zone to buy flood insurance. Mm -hmm. questions related to financing on this particular item? So are we agreed to add Mike's um, comment? And should, yes, should David, Chris? Yeah. Okay. Ned, do you have that? Yep. Okay. And just to finish Mike's portion of this on the um, bottom of uh, page Three, I believe it is. Um, stormwater and flood control utility fee. Everybody there with me? Yep. yep. Okay. Means the periodic user fee imposed pursuant to this article, and he's suggesting changing the ordinance. I thought that was good. Change the word article to ordinance? Exactly. Since this is. Yeah. I know it's David. And, and I think the, the same change would apply on page one. Uh huh. This under authority, this article. Okay, good catch. So this might be some of the legalese that Alan Seawall catches also. Good. And he might say article is correct, not ordinance. Right, understandable. And we would defer to the legal. <laughs> well, no, well we as he said. <laughs> no, no. Well, anyway, this will be dependent upon the legalese. <clears throat> All right, All right. I'm just going to open it to discussion for other people. David? No, it's just, just above on page one. Uh -huh. Under purpose, the second to the last line. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing in there about constructing new facilities. In other words, it's maintain, operate, modify, replace. But should it should it also say construct for mm -hmm. you know changes, modifications, increase the height? Or what say the staff? Should it Issues that changed as a discussion with sure we can we can go through this rather quickly we can start off with 280-1 okay. uh, which is basically established as kind of the formal preamble to everything the purpose we just discussed 280-2 we have 280-3 which is the authorities from the Commonwealth that give us the right to create the utility we have a number of definitions here a lot of this was taken from the Westfield mm -hmm. Stormwater ordinance, just so you're aware of that. Yes, David. On the defi definition of developed land, second item on 280 4, almost every bit of property in the city has been altered from its natural state in the sense that it was 100% forested um, how many hundred years ago. And and I, th I don't think that's, that's the intention, but would it read better if you added the word substantially or some other word? Well, it, it, to me, that's sort of, you're right, but I mean, if, if it's land that is now being reforested, back to its natural state, then it's been substantially restored, you could say. And, and I know that, um, we, I'm sure we have maps that show that clearly what is, you know, what's forested and what isn't. Right? Currently, yeah. And there's some archival records of what was and wasn't. Right, but I think that's irrelevant at this point. I, mean, I, I, I know what you're saying, but I think it's pretty subtle. I, mean, we just, I don't know, it's up to you. It doesn't, to me, the word substantially altered. Well, well it's the, just I'm something. worried that a word like substantially would, would add, what does that mean? What yeah. does substantially mean? Not what is that? Right, add a, a <laughs> level of, okay. My property is not substantially altered. Right, I just so have one driveway it's not and a three-car parking lot, <laughs> two houses. So I worry a little bit. It it doesn't. I'm not sure if it adds. 
definition to it. Um, but we can look at, at other options there. Um, well, where does that definition become important in the rest of the ordinance? You know, I don't know. It's interesting. This one, I don't know if this is actually used in the ordinance. Uh, I was trying to find it. And um, we, we use undeveloped lands. Um, Which we probably don't define. We do. We do. We do. <laughs> <laughs> we do. But it, it, it may not even be relevant, honestly. And, So uh, my recommendation is that we would strike the definition developed land. The whole thing, if it's not needed. If it's not needed. Right. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. Maybe you want to continue? Sure. So we have all these other uh, def de definitions in here for the ordinance. Uh, try to provide clarity. Under um, 280-5, it is about establishing the charge and to formalize the quarterly building, billing of it and depositing it in a special revenue account. 28-6 um, discusses the rates and the model of how it's going to be set up with the assumption that the utility is not going to exceed $2 million for the first five years and beginning the sixth year, the Board of Public Works make recommendations to the City Council to approve, to increase that. Um, it could be less than $2 million the first five years if we come up, I mean, because the way the, what we're proposing in this is that we have proposed a budget to the City Council. If it's $1.72 million, we're going to adjust the rates accordingly to get the $1.72 million that we need. It would be the wide years. Right, so the $2 million is kind of the cap yeah. that we're looking at. And that provides sufficient, not sufficient funds, but funds to be set aside in an account or to be used on a yearly basis for projects. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, set at $500,000, if I remember correctly, in the budget. It's kind of akin to the um, water and sewer enterprise fund that we actually fund water line replacement and sewer line replacement accounts every year mm -hmm. to do projects. Mm -hmm. And this, this would not include bonding? Funding it does. Way. The $2 million is paying off existing general bond debt that we have that were related to drainage work that the city has previously paid for that we're currently still paying off. So it would relieve the city's general fund of previous debt service for particular drainage projects. That's a relatively small item. It is relatively small. But would it allow us to borrow half a million dollars for a particular something that had to be done? Uh, it would have to be looked at in the rate schedule with the interest and debt service to see if it could be done. And would it take that 500000 and subtract 200 out of it per year so we'd only have 300000 towards projects? It seems to me when we... Uh, no, I was just on um, yeah. with him. Yeah, okay. Well, like that when we have talked about the budget, we have talked about ways of um, paying for it so that it never becomes a moot point because we talk about is funding a bonding appropriate here or using the surplus from the previous year or whatever. So it's never out of the picture. Right. And if there is a huge project that needs to be undertaking, the city can still look at doing an override for that outside of this particular fund. Right. Mm -hmm. And maybe this isn't the, the thing to answer here, but do we need sort of building on what you just said, do we need an unless clause? Unless where? Just Two million per year, unless no, because I, I mean this is our rate, this is our budget set. Right. If the city wants to borrow for a much larger project or feels it needs a project and wants to do a general override or somehow else finance it, it's it outside, do it outside of, of this. It's outside of this utility. Right. Okay. Outside of the utility, yeah. I think that's the yeah. important. Okay. Ned. Um, two eighty seven talks about the scope of responsibility for stormwater management facilities, um, and flood control facilities. And um, I know that Doug take over this. He is he knows this inside and out. Doug, sure, yeah. I would actually. I don't know if anybody has any questions about the rate section, but that's there's some detail in there. Right, two eighty six. Yeah. Um, can we come back to that? Because we can come back to that. Yeah, because yeah. that might engender more discussion um, of just defining what's happening with rates. 
280-7 defines um, the stormwater management flood control systems and facilities um, within the right of way, you know, on private property if there's an easement. It just makes clear w what facilities are op operated by the city. Um, 280-8 defines the, the purpose of the fund. Um, and we tried to not leave anything out there that, that may be necessary. So you looked at the MS4 permit, you looked at the Army Corps requirements, we looked at you know parts of the CDM report of capital needs that we might have going forward. So we're trying to cover everything in this section. Then 280-9 um, talks about exemptions from the utility fee, um, which there's there's two basic exemptions, public streets, highways, rights of ways, and then the second is permanently protected agricultural or conservation restriction land. Um, and then we added a clause at the end of that, if there's other land that has a that, that has a document documented permanent restriction that it could be considered also as an exemption. But at this time we're just those are the only properties outside the roadway that would be exempted from the fee. So one of those particular properties might be water supply land, mm -hmm. where the new purchases of water supply land are actually written on the deed that is taken for water supply protection purposes. So that's kind of like, it's never going to be developed again. It's mm -hmm. going to take an act of the legislature to turn that over. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. most of that stuff that we're looking at is outside this community anyways. Right. We're not expanding the Northampton watershed system only in other communities. So, um, I, the, the first in 280-8A, the acquisition by gift, um, that sort of alludes to what you're talking about in 280-9B, uh, 1 and 2, yes? The, so can, yeah. Somebody has a big parcel of land and they really want to protect it forever for whatever reason and they donate it to the city, or the city purchases it for that purpose. In other words, they're willing to sell the rights to develop. Right. So they sell those rights so somebody can put it in, in a permanent restricted uh, form, whatever that might be. Right, so usually, typically, the um, APR program is something the state runs, mm -hmm. and it's competitive to receive money from the state for those programs. <coughs> so you can see a lot of more properties in what we call chapter status, Chapter 60, 60, uh, 61, 61A, 61B mm -hmm. status, which is a partial protection status, mm -hmm. and that's not in here at this point. Mm -hmm. It could be something that's addressed in the policy down the road, but th what they were looking for is some permanency of the land that is absolutely protected against development going forward. Someone's made that commitment to do that forever. But within that, don't they still have to pay, doesn't all the land have to pay some minimum fee? month or year, whatever, the, per quarter, whatever we're coming up with, right? That was, I think, one of the initial goals of mm -hmm. the task force was that this particular request, I believe, came from Wayne Fiden's office mm -hmm. on the agricultural program. Right. Well, the agriculture, and, they all pay if it's one acre, correct? Something, do I, it, well, these would, it, it, these would be exempt, the APR. Completely exempt. 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 Oh. And your estimated value of that was about 17000 a year for all the protected for land all in the city. city. We looked at all those lands and what the potential fee is under the, the, the budget as, it's, as it is now, $2 million, and it would be approximately $17,500 total out of the budget. So both the APR and the CR land? Right. Which didn't didn't change the other fees perceptibly. Right. Um, section 28010 um, deals with credits, and
and the basic premise is that there will be a credit policy that's developed by the Department of Public Works and approved by the Board of Public Works to define what those credits are. So the, the definition of those credits are not in here, but the process, how they would be set up under this policy, um, and how they would work is, is, is authorized here, but it's not defined. And for what reason was it not authorized in this when we had some credit, we had some uh, proposals for credits? The, there are, um, I think it, it became clear that that's going to be a standalone document that's, okay. that's not a short, you know, it mm -hmm. would take up too many pages and then, <laughs> um, and it's something that may change over time. Our, our, our goals and our and, and what we're trying to do may change over time, mm -hmm. and that would give the Board of Public Works and the department the ability to change that as it's... So it, it offers some elasticity. Right, yeah. right. And we looked at um, a whole range of credits and exemptions, and they, they came in at different levels of, of different communities did different things. And <clears throat> the one that I think is the most compelling one is the one that came out of Ohio, um, which, with respect to the city engineers, I, I don't think we could draft. It's 42 pages of, <laughs> you know, and, and that might be something where we decide if, if that's the way we want to go, that, that that needs to be a contract thing. And, and I, I'm totally with Doug that I think that this is, is going to be something that, that doesn't really belong here. So will either Alan or the city council care that we that we were doing it this way, or would they support that we're doing it this way, and because of the implications for the future? I don't know if Alan would have an issue. The city council may want to make sure there are certain things mm -hmm. that they want to see, and so if they say that, we can add, we can add them. Or they can add. Sure. So, like in existing ordinances now for excavation in the public way, it says the board of public works will issue a permit. Well, you developed your own policy to issue that permit years ago. And what that policy meant, and it changes time to time, mm -hmm. but the fact that it's embedded in the ordinance gives you the authority to issue the permit. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't say how the permit's structured, the fees attached to it, or anything. Well, it would be interesting to see if that part goes, because that would be much better for keeping DPW policies alive. Mm -hmm. And we have we have a draft sort of framework for these credits at this mm -hmm. point, so the, that draft will likely go along with what we're, we're oh, putting out there yeah. so that the council knows what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, section 28011 um, deals with billing, delinquencies, collections, abatements. Um, it um, gets into how we collect when bills aren't paid, and, and some of this language comes right out of our sewer. I was going to say, it's probably uh, boilerplate. It, it is. It's yeah. standard language that we use for our utilities and the non-payment of bills. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Section 280.12 appeals hearings um, gives a process to appeal bills and also to appeal credit. Again, a lot of sort of legal language, but that's uh, much of this came right out of the Westfield ordinance and looked to be right. Alan may have input on how to change it, but he's already looked at the Westfield ordinance and didn't have an issue with it. Oh, good. So, go back to page five, yes, please. which talks about the, the billing rate and the properties, uh, the rate model, and so on, and Section C came out of the uh, public comments that we received at our last public meeting on this, public information meeting, I should say, and basically broke it back down into tiers again. Mm -hmm. so, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Based on previous. Based, based on impervious. Yeah, I mean, based on impervious. Right. right. So Doug has a schedule that he put out. All right, there's a, a revised, yet another revised sample fee table. It's a sample fee for the tiers, which is a small sheet, 
not the sheet that you're currently looking at. Oh, that's actually, I don't, I haven't ended that one out, but this is, this is a detail of um, how an earlier tier structure had been set up, and then the average, and then the tiers, um, the new tiers, um, and how it plays out, mm -hmm. um, how we got to the same numbers. So we, when we went to the public information meeting, we had looked at just having one residential fee, and there's outcry from the public to bring back tiered fees again. And so up above is the original, which had to do with acreage size, and then the new one that we're proposing and looking at now is to do the square footage of impervious area on a building lot. And part of this came out of um, listening to some of the comments at the meeting where people said, I have a small house, I have a small driveway, I should pay less than someone with a big house or a big driveway. And if we were looking at it based on total area, it may or may not get at that. So we thought we'd, we'd try looking at tiers based on impervious area because that's really the driving mm -hmm. um, factor in this. That it, It's weighted a lot higher in the in the hydraulic numbers, mm -hmm. um, and the numbers, you know, the, it, it seemed to, to break up fairly easily, and, and the fees um, came out, as you see. Um, they didn't change their percentage portion towards mm -hmm. the total utility. Mm -hmm. Right. I was just curious, because when we were having our discussions about fees, I thought there was some discussion because we're talking about pervious versus impervious, that, mm -hmm. that we couldn't get this level of detail. So what changed that? So um, we were, part of the problem with getting, breaking up the 6,600 um, residential properties using total area mm -hmm. was that we were going to have to use assessor's information for that um, because, and, and we'd have to check all that information. Mm -hmm. Um, impervious, we have good information. We're going to spend time making that information better. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're looking at tiers, once you're put into a tier, it's based on an average. So it's, you're not, people aren't paying a fee based on what's on their property. It's based on an average. So the data that we need to break up the tiers, um, we have, mm -hmm. um, and I think we're confident that that, that information that we have, we, it, it, it's good enough to use to break, break up the properties into the tiers. Um, and over time, we're going to be improving that information. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to have, um, in the short term, we're going to be looking at hiring a consultant to check that information. Um, that we have and bring it up to date and then we have plans to uh, fly the city and and process that data and have something called a plan of metrics which can pull out impervious information for each lot at a, at a much higher accuracy. So, Carrie, did you have your hand up? No, I, I just did like okay. this for a second. Okay, there, uh, David. <laughs> <laughs> By flying it, is that the twenty-four thousand dollar item? Yes. Right. The, the, the later in the month or yes. So there's a yeah. We're, we're heading there. If we're if this moves along and we're looking at issuing bills starting in next July, we're not going to have that more accurate information. But we're going to spend time making the the information we have more accurate so that we can send out bills. If July first is, is the date, would people be able to um, have a hearing on whether they feel that they have less impervious, um, impervious yeah. area? Yeah, that's the appeal yeah. process. Right. Okay. They can make an appeal. Um, you know, they can try to prove to us that they're 
on perhaps a different side of that, that tier breakdown. But it's still, the fee is based on an average. So once they're in a tier, it, it's a, the bill is based on an average number. So, so that would just, I know this is details, but like that would be claims committee for the BPW? Or how would we? It goes to the director first, and then it moves to the claims committee. Okay. And these, these fees are annual fees? That's right. So yeah. divided by four, it's, it's not a big dollar amount to pay for. You know, for the right. homeowners no, part of view. Yeah. But I really applaud your going back and looking at that because we had property tax. Property tax is not the same to, as impervious <coughs> versus impervious. So this is a whole different variable that it, with that right. underlying rationale that we talked about at our meeting. So, or remember, I'm looking at him, but everybody. I mean, I just think that that's really great. I, I think it's really good that the fee is based on something that we can say is what the problem is. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. maybe more runoff than these so yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's, it's the right way to go. And it's, yeah, it's probably going to be more difficult to do, but we should do it. Did you have something? Nope. Um, my only question was on, the, uh, on this, this chart. Uh, it looks like pervious plus impervious should add up to total, which it does down below, but doesn't above. And I was just curious on how that might be. These are the averages for... So, so these impervious, impervious, and total areas are the averages for those. Oh, for so those it's not. So, so, you know, for the first category, 1,611 properties, the average total area is that, the average impervious. Gotcha. The average, so they may not add up. Great. Okay. Right. They, they probably don't. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they do down below. When, but those aren't averages down below. Those are, yeah, those are exact properties. That, that's, yeah, that yeah. was the differential. Yeah, that's like, the, yep. Thank you. Yep. And that, in many ways, that total area really doesn't have any bearing on the bill. So it's still there. But it's, impervious and impervious are, by definition, specific um, geological um, words. I mean, they, they can be defined by certain characteristics. Yeah, and we have, in, in the ordinance, those two are okay. defined. So, so those are two important definitions. Okay, in the great. Yeah. I totally missed that. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, oh, I see. I, you know, I see. That is important because I know a lot of people will perceive a gravel driveway as being a uh, pervious surface, right? right? In fact, it's compacted and it's not. Right. Perfect. It will absorb more water than asphalt, but right. not a heck of a lot. Conversely, you can also <laughs> the technology's there to do an impervious to do a pervious driveway. Right. Right. Yeah, I, I would like to suggest that we replace the word coefficient with percentage, just in the sense of not having to define what what's a coefficient. That's too long. I don't know if anybody you know, who wants to know. Oh, it's a it's an engineering math math? word. It's a math, part of a math math? mathematical formula based right. on runoff. <laughs> oh, exactly, right. But do we have to explain that to the public? Or would it not be simpler just to say percentage? But a percentage is based percentage. on the 100 concept, yeah. percent. The coefficients aren't necessarily the Could same. Could you add the definition of the word coefficient to the definition mm -hmm. section? Yeah, that's a great idea. But is, is the coefficient ever more than one? No. So it is a 100. In fact, it's never really more than 0.95 or 0.98. Right. Yeah. Perfect. But if we could come up with a two or three line definition of coefficient, wouldn't that be better? And again, it would clarify it. Think about engineering. Because right. it, well, it's, no, it's I mean, it's just adding information that it's will substantiate over time. Right? It's not a percentage of part or something. It's part of a formula to get to the runoff that you're developing. That's what it is. It isn't that it's 95% impervious, it's a coefficient that's used in a formula. And, and while it could go up to 100, you know, jump, 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 it, it doesn't necessarily have to add to one because there might be different coefficients for different conditions. But it still could be a percentage of, of one. But 
it's not critical. But if you think adding the definition would be critical. Yeah, if you think adding the definition that's and, and perhaps using examples um, in, in, you know, fact sheets or things that we're going to give out to the public, a, a better explanation of what that is and easier to understand. Part of this, if you have property in Northampton, it's an engineering degree. <laughs> <laughs> but only in math and data <laughs> uh, So it seems like, are you looking for the board, board's willingness to pass this on to the city council for their consideration next week? Yes. So could I have a motion? I'd like to, to make a motion that we pass forward to the city council the draft uh, ordinance relating to uh, stormwater and flood control utility ordinance up to the city council. As, as, as oh, as amended. As, amended. as, as amended. As notated. Or with recommendations. Or with recommendations and after the review of the city's attorney. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? We really just had the motion before we did the discussion. Okay. Any more staff comments? Or anything? Okay. No. Nice work. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Okay, thank you. So we don't have to have Doug, this meeting next Tuesday morning. morning? This will, but we will not have a meeting next Tuesday morning as we floated out there that we weren't sure how this was going to go, whether or not we'd even be able to get this done to you. So, yeah. thank yeah. you. Thank you. Good stuff. Yeah. Thank you, Doug. Thanks. $125,000 for purposes of the 25% design and construction requirement for the Robert Meadow Brook Slope Stabilization from the Federal Emergency Management Agency. Move approval. Second. So, when I met with the mayor in this a few months ago, I know we did discuss it at one point with the board in generalities. Um, the mayor felt that since it is water property, the water should pay the 25%. Uh, the issue also, if, if this continues to erode, we are going to lose potentially a bridge, drain systems, and a roadway. So even though it's occurring on city water land, there is an effect downstream, immediately downstream, that could damage general utilities also. So the mayor has asked that I approach the board because uh, for this 25%, because once the FEMA grant comes out, when it does, we have 90 days to put together our 25%. And I'd like to think that we have some form of vote from the Board of Public Works in advance of that happening, mm -hmm. so we're not scrambling at the last minute. Such as uh, River Road Retaining Wall, that $400,000 commitment was already made through the capital improvements of FY14. So that funding, that appropriation is in place already. So I guess that's the gray area of the question, is whether or not there, do you feel it's 100% water department issue or not? If we decided that it was a 100% water department, then the funds would come from the water enterprise. Fund. That's correct. And if not, then we would be paying for it how? Um, there would be another discussion with the mayor's office as to some shared contribution of the $125,000. But haven't you just indicated that he's not amenable to that? That's correct. Right. For my first discussion with him, but I haven't had a chance to really discuss it with the board either. Mm -hmm. Issues, comments? I would not want us to not be able to tap the FEMA money because we were dickering over who was paying for the design of engineering. Yeah. yeah, that wouldn't look good. That wouldn't look good at all. However, we could continue to Dicker. discuss it with <laughs> <laughs> the mayor or whoever in the future to get reimbursed or whatever. No, we haven't spent the money. No, we haven't. We're just saying we think it's a good idea. We haven't seen the grant yet. Right. Yeah, sure. Is it possible for the board to conditionally pass this so that we would be available to jump in should we get the grant with the proviso that you would chat once more with the mayor? If that's part of your vote tonight, sure. But, but that would cover your requirements. Yes. Not to I'm just looking for the 25%. I need it from somewhere. <clears throat> Thoughts about that as a possible I say we jack up the city's contribution to the stormwater fee to make up for it. Well, <laughs> we control the rates. 
<laughs> Everyone pays this except for them. <laughs> I guess I don't understand why this is an issue. Um, is it traditionally not been something that we've paid for out of water, or is this just sort of a one of a kind situation where we haven't really got a, a you know a track record of, of how we've addressed? Uh, you know, the only dam other work. issue we've had like this, I mean, well, dam work is being paid solely out of the water enterprise right. fund. Um, during Hurricane Irene, we had some <clears throat> major washouts up, up, up in the hill towns mm -hmm. of our water supply land. And the city water department fixed those at their own nickel without a FEMA reimbursement. Because they were cr critical to us. They're critical to roadways to our watershed. Yeah, yeah. This I is Mother Nature just trying to go her own way again. Mm -hmm. yeah. It seems like with the enterprise fund, there seems to be this tension between what the general fund is funding or has funded and what is funded with revenues in the enterprise fund. And I think that that, that, that was what I was asking. Yeah. That, that's, you. you know, where do we, where's the line between there? Um, you know, we feel a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that the revenues that we bring in support the services that we need to provide, that we're obligated to provide. Yet it seems like there's this, this sliding of, or a swapping of cities, what the city might have paid for before with the general fund by the drainage, you know, drainage and this other thing into the enterprise fund because it then gives the general fund a little more flexibility in how to spend their time. So I think that, that that's that's the tension that we're feeling. Mm -hmm. and, and it I, is water land. Pardon me? It is a water uh, area. It is <clears throat> it is actually part it was constructed as part of the first water supply for the city of Northampton by the water commissioners mm -hmm. back in eighteen seventy something. And if it were to fail, would it in any way impact our water supply? No. So it has it's not a critical piece of land. We could let it go and let it collapse and we would it would not in any way impact the, the water supply. No. It would not. But as a as a property owner we'd have some liability for any downstream damage. Possibly typically. yes. But two members you have both said that you don't want us to risk losing the FEMA money. I think you've concurred in some way. Yeah. Is, this the, is this the, there was a slide in the presentation of a, a big gravel embankment that it was obviously. That's it? Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. <coughs> so I'm going to call the question and put this to a vote. All those in favor of um, approving the spending of $125,000 from the Water Enterprise Fund? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Stand aside? No, I'm, I'm I. I'm I. I just didn't I. <laughs> <laughs> but I would still recommend that we continue to have a, you know, an earnest discussion about what's the line between enterprise funded activity mm -hmm. and what should be in the general fund. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Especially since when we did the rates earlier this year, we made a concerted effort to pare back what we had, what we had, the, the demands we had placed on those, placed on those funds, so that we could, you know, do what we could to control the growth of the rate, and it seems to run a little bit counter to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also take your point that it's not going to impact the water infrastructure if, if we, if we you know, don't do this. So I think we need to have that discussion again. Okay, new business number two, discussion and vote on street acceptance for View Avenue. So this is kind of... Um, an odd discussion because View Avenue is one of the ones that the way the Board of Public Works was looking at accepting private ways, I think this would probably qualify under we, your recent discussions. However, the issue is that we haven't seen a petition for it yet. And without a petition, you really can't act. So I guess the question is, is are there some streets that we want to force the petition on even though we went out there, we met with the general public on that street, told them the process they needed to go through, had no recommendation that we wouldn't want to accept it, but we never saw a petition still. Versus other streets, we generated the petitions just to get the process through. Otherwise, we'd probably be doing barely 
any of the ways right now if we didn't force that issue. David? Have, have we talked to the residents? Do we know their views on it? They wanted to be accepted as a public way when we had the public informational meeting out there, mm -hmm. when we did the site visit. But it wasn't a public hearing for street acceptance that we had that first time. Did we get back to any other potential um, public way, public ways, to suggest that they put in a petition? Well, we met with a number of streets that time, which was the first one, if I remember right, was Edwards Church, mm -hmm. Bottoms, mm -hmm. Park, mm -hmm. Edgewood. There was a number of them that we met with. And out of your first set of recommendations, you said it was, was Taylor Street off of Jackson Street. And they said, we're fine with taking care of our street, yep. our private driveway. Yeah. Water Street Leeds was another one, the driveway to the house out back. Mm -hmm. That one just fell off because just what it was was a driveway. Mm -hmm. Meadow Avenue, the, person, the sole resident out there said, no, I do not yeah. want this to become a public way. And um, Bottoms Road wanted to become a public way. We told them the process. Recently, last week, we emailed the petition to a lady who lives on Bottoms Road. Well, I haven't heard anything back through the city council that they've actually submitted it. So View is kind of this, kind of one of the streets that's just kind of out there that nothing happened. It does have a public utility on it, which is a water line that we installed I think back in the 50s or so. Um, I believe that street is also potentially serves as the entrance or nearby the entrance to the coal development, the infill development down there, in that vicinity. So I'm really kind of odds what the board wants to do about view, even though you had a no recommendation. You treated some of the other streets. I mean, we forced the issue on the other streets, but we didn't force this one because we said no, we gave the residents the opportunity, and they did nothing with it. I, don't, I just want to ask a clarification. You sent the email to the Bottoms Road resident on their request? or On their request. On their request. And I, I expect that that request was prompted because of the conversation I had with one of the residents yeah. on, at Parent Center, okay. who was more than willing to give me an earful. So I think the issue on the table is whether we should generate a... Uh, opportunity for residents of View Avenue to submit a petition if we should write a petition ourselves or if we should let the matter lie. David? I, I know one of the <coughs> residents if I, who I haven't talked to about this, but I could. I just didn't see, is, do, do you want it? Do you not want it? <coughs> I just need to know which direction because winter is coming soon. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need to, to make a decision. Any other thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think since we did, um, after the, the initial day where we, we did six streets, um, and, and I think it was the following week, I think even at that meeting we all knew that we were probably going to have to do it all over again uh, because of the need for a petition to uh, get it going. And, and we did uh, do petitions for a lot of streets to get the process going. It does seem like we owe them another shot. So I think it would be great. I think a good way to do it is if a board member approaches somebody from the neighborhood and says, you know, all you need to do is still interested in being a public way. You just need to submit this petition. And hopefully they will. I mean, if they don't, I don't know what to do. Well, I just think there's, I mean, I wasn't going to go looking for a petition. It came, yeah. that the question came to me. Right. And early on, I remember the conversation, and it was very clear that the folks on Bottoms Road were very interested in us to, following their street, yeah. and I know we made the vote not to, not to mm -hmm. consider it, but at the same time we did look at some other roads, Pine Valley Extension I think has a lot of similarities to Bottoms, Bottoms Road, mm -hmm. so we accepted uh, Pine Valley Road, and so I was thinking, you know, I we did not circle around and revisit with Bottoms. Did we do a petition for Pine Valley Road? Yes. We did? Yes. Uh, so that's, that's where I think we've got the issue is that mm -hmm. we... Mm -hmm. Even though we told them they had to do one and they didn't do it, we, we, we initiated it. Otherwise, yeah. we wouldn't be having any conversation about probably the majority of these private ways. Right. Mm -hmm. Or so, meetings. Mm -hmm. So the way I look at it, we could do it two ways. We could do the petition ourselves. Or, David, if you're willing, we go talk to them about it. Yes. Say, well, you know, 
All you need to do is do a petition and we'll come visit you again. But, as Ned points out, this needs to be done right away if, uh, because otherwise then, then we have to think what's our fallback. Is our fallback for us to generate the petition ourselves so that we can notify them that we are formally voting on it? Yes. I, that's where I look at it. One way or the other, I think we need to get a petition so that we can act on it formally. Because we already know they were interested. Yeah. So, David, can you do that by the end of this week? Oh, if yeah. it works out and let Ned know what, what, what could happen, mm -hmm. and maybe sure. we just go ahead and put in a petition if you don't have, mm -hmm. so that then it's time is of the essence. Is that acceptable to everybody? Then I don't understand the interim step. If, if our fallback is we'll generate the petition ourselves, let's just do it. Well, if, if that is. I think we've said that, but it could be our fault. I thought that was what? Yeah, that's what I was saying. That if you didn't have success, then Ned would go ahead and generate the petition. I mean, if they don't want it to become a public way, I'm fine with that. I'll take a water easement right. to maintain the water line, right. and I'm done. Right. I don't have a problem with that. Well, we don't want to do it if there's a negative perspective. Perspective on it. But then is View and Bottoms Road also? And are there well, any other ones that are out there? We have to wait for Bottoms Road because he sent the information right. out. So now it is, that is definitely in their court. Okay. If David finds that they are open to something, then that would be in their court. But they need to know time is of the essence right. as well. And But if he doesn't, isn't able to contact the person for whatever reason, then Ned can go ahead and generate the petition. Okay. And I would like I, a motion that we table the View Avenue discussion or vote in. In, as we wait for the petition conversation. Yeah. Okay. Is that good for you? Sure. Okay. Okay. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Contract to the town of Arlington, Massachusetts for acquiring ortho imagery for use in the city's GIS system in the amount not to exceed $24,000. Move approval. I knew those folks from Arlington were spying on us. <laughs> <laughs> So this is part of a big statewide consortium of communities that are trying to generate the new versions of GIS mapping for the communities, which are very high resolution mm -hmm. orthophotos and imagery. This is also what Doug was alluding to and David share about the impervious areas going forward. So we don't have a contract tonight because it is not a standard contract to be signed. It's a procurement process that goes through Chapter 40. B, I think Joe Cook called it. So he's working on the language of that. It needs to have a council order to approve it, but he wants to ensure that the Board of Public Works has discussed this, and we're looking at a contribution of a total of $24,000 from the Water and Sewer Enterprise Funds for this mapping endeavor. The flight wouldn't be done till the springtime. And so uh, let me step back. Wayne Fiden is also securing a third of his own money through Smith College, some other outside sources, and his budget to create his third share of this. A lot of the GIS mapping we do is utility related, water, sewer, drains, I mean they're all mapped, they're all on there. So this is um, also this is being done with LIDAR which will give us one foot contour intervals oh, instead of the last time this was done was 1965. Wow. The last time we had the ortho photos done for Northampton, or uh, ortho imagery, I should say, which produced the 1965 topo maps for the city, which were five foot contours. So this really brings us up to a level that you can really do a lot <coughs> of great work off these ortho photos. And because it's being done at a statewide price, we're getting a great price on it rather than Northampton going out alone having a play and try to process all the data and information with this. Uh, with it also, you're able to pick the planimetric features you want out of this. So if we want to know where vegetation is or all the utilities, they give you actually a 50 scale to percent resolution of it. Do we want to pick up mailboxes and parking meters and identify that? I mean, it gets down to basically seeing a baseball cap in the back of someone's car. I, I sat in a session with uh, Bob Newton looking at some stuff that stone walls across fields all over the state. It was just very impressive. Ned, you said uh, this is, Wayne fighting would come in with a 30% contribution, and is this 60% or 30%? 
this is uh, a two thirds of the cost of okay. it. Or 66 and right now, if it works out, the flight will probably happen next spring, mm -hmm. and that data will probably be available sometime in the fall to early winter next year, mm -hmm. just so you know that. It's not going to happen this sure. fall. But like I said, there's a number of communities across the state uh, through MassGIS or creating this consortium that people want to get this done, and here's the approximate price tag to get it done. Mm -hmm. um, it's a rough number, but we think it's a good planning number to use and go with. Do we have a motion on the table? Yes. Okay. So all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Are there any new topics that the chair did not reasonably anticipate? <laughs> anticipate? Do we have any oh, a discussion about the four-way stop sign at Jackson and Prospect at some point? It came up. Uh, Ned got it on the agenda for the TPC and the TPC thought it was a good idea to make it permanent. Right, so they asked that I draft the ordinance. The only issue that's going to come up is when winter comes, the barriers are going to be difficult to keep in place. Yeah. <coughs> and the center line stop sign or in the center of the road is going to have to disappear, just so you're aware of that. Right. So we're going to try the best we can, if the ordinance passes, to keep it through the winter as best we can maintain it. Um, I don't know how that's going to happen quite yet. And then look at a permanent solution next spring when construction season begins. It's just too late in the season now. There, there was one thing that was discussed, and that was whether or not we go to um, the larger four-foot uh, patio stop signs as opposed to the single 36 that we there. And then I think... The ones on Prospect are oversized. Oh, they are? Yes. Are they the four-footers? I believe so. Oh, really? Okay. I've seen them... Uh, on Florence Road, where they have some, they're actually on two posts. That's Florence Road and Burt's Pit Road. Yeah. And I believe the Florence Road intersection had the oversized size put on because uh, they were the major road and not the minor road. Right. And well, Burt's Pit Road was always used to stopping. Right. And that's what I would, I would think the same thing. The only <coughs> place I would think you'd want to do that, a, a more prominent stop sign, would be on Prospect Street. Mm -hmm. Woodlawn Ave, yeah, everyone's already conditioned to stop. Um, I think somebody also mentioned LED, adding LEDs to the stop sign. And I, how does that work exactly? Is it always letters that just... No, they flash. They flash. Southampton has them. West Hampton has them at uh, one intersection each town that I know that had a lot of accidents. Yeah. And basically it's a solar panel yeah. attached to it and it flashes about every two seconds or every second just at every point of the angle of the stop sign there's a red flashing light. So it's a continuous flash. Yes. And it's powered by the solar. Okay. I, I just wasn't sure if it had something else, some other technology like motion sensing when no. the car approaches, that's when it flashes. So talking with the police chief of West Hampton, they were about two thousand dollars per sign okay. for the LED signs. And they look great in dog maps. Do they? <laughs> How hard is it? Are they easy to get off the thing? So. No comment. We're being recorded. <laughs> I didn't see one in the um, can, can I? Um, it's interesting, almost everywhere I go, I end up in a conversation about what, what's, the, um, what's the rules of etiquette at a four-way stop sign, or what are the rules of the road. And it, there seems to be a lot of, I mean, when the, the Florence Road, Burfitt's Road went in, that was talked about then. Uh, I'm not sure that anybody really agrees on what the rules are in terms of who has priority going through the, 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 the intersection. I think it would be a marvelous thing as we uh, formalize and make these things permanent for the Gazette to run a great story that says, this is how you behave when you come into a four-way stop it's, sign. I think it's a common courtesy how you behave. There, there is a rule. No, there's <laughs> rules. Yeah. Um, um, and you should include in that article how to use a rotary. <laughs> and your blinkers. And a roundabout. Yeah, yeah. And your blinkers. And your blinkers. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of people who don't know how to go through a four-way stop sign. Yeah, and I think it would be really, you know, <laughs> that whatever the rules are, yeah. um, I think that we should make a point of educating the public, especially since this is such a high profile. And everybody seems to really like it, but everyone I know who I've spoken with has said, but I've almost been clipped by someone who doesn't understand what so, the protocol yes. is. I, yeah, my personal feeling is, is that the explanation is only going to muddy the water and that we should stick with Ned's proposal, which is common courtesy. But. Yeah, but 
but if that's lacking at the intersection, <laughs> what are the rules of the road? <laughs> there have been some negative letters to the editor. Uh, but I do think that uh, we should just let the marketing committee handle it. The marketing, the marketing committee? committee? Is this a, a new committee? <laughs> it doesn't exist yet. Yeah. So on the four-way stop, the only complaint we've had is from government force at this point, where it's being used as a cut-through to uh, evade the stop sign. Mm. Just so you're aware of that. I oh, think it's yeah. infrequent, but they did write a letter uh, on that. I did forward it to FPC. the board and the um, uh, TPC. I have some feelings on that. Um, I, I think it's always been used as a cut-through. I've seen people do that. I, I go down Woodlawn Ave all the time. <laughs> I, I rarely go across <laughs> back. And I have seen people um, peel off, particularly behind me. I'm coming to the stop sign. I'm going to cross and go down Jackson Street. And I've seen them. They, they're going to turn right. They don't want to wait for me, so they go through the parking lot. I've seen that happen many times over the years. I think the answer is for them to eliminate one of their curb cuts. I think that's the right answer. It's it's an issue that would go away mm -hmm. if they didn't have two curb cuts. I, how many businesses have curb cuts? Actually, there's another one on State Street that we try to go away too, and that's the serious so, yeah. from their parking lot. It just it doesn't really mm -hmm. improve yeah. the flow yeah. of traffic at all. I think it's a safety hazard. Mm -hmm. itself. Especially with the crosswalks right there, mm -hmm. all over the place. Yeah. yeah. So, but you know, but in in their letter they said, oh well, that's not the answer. Mm -hmm. They they couldn't afford to do that, or they couldn't. That would be bad for their business. I don't think that would impact their business in a negative. But it might create some negative uh, fallout for other businesses well, if, they, uh, if they were to put those in there. I, I doubt it. If you were coming to a stop sign and you were waiting to turn left here versus going through the intersection and mm -hmm. turn left and then turn left back in, I, I don't see how that would impact the revenue at all. It, it's just public perception. I agree. I agree. It's one that. of those things, but yeah. the public perception of the roundabout at Wood Park was pretty negative until people started to use it yeah. and they realized, oh, this is a switch way to go. Yeah. Okay. Can, Can I ask a question? Is it is it illegal to use it as a cut through? No. It's not. Um, I already asked the chief of police that. No. Oh. Okay. It is on a gas station, though, right? You're not allowed to cut through a gas station. I don't know. Well, at least in Florida it was, because I remember getting pulled over for that. <laughs> what is this? In Florida. We're on camera. I know. It's okay. I was uh, 17, down in Miami. Got lost. The cops were right there waiting. It's not very polite. I'll say that. It's not it is, and, and, and it's really dangerous. I agree with that, too. I think they have a good point. It's dangerous. But I I think that uh, not having a four-way stop sign is more dangerous. I agree. I, I mean, agree. this is we're trying to deal with the public good here, and You know, it's a, um, there is a perception thing that goes with it, but I think the solution is one curb cut, and I would, if I were me, I would put the wood on that one myself. There's more room for various turns, and there's going to be more traffic issues at Prospect, I think. But, I, you know, what do I know? Okay, solid waste update in Locust <coughs> Street storage shed. Uh... What do you mean by talking <laughs> <laughs> So let me give you an update on the landfill. The membrane is on the cap right now. Mm -hmm. um, they're putting down the sand drainage layer. A little bit behind schedule. Uh, we're concerned about meeting the hydro seeding of October 15th. Status grass growth. But um, mm -hmm. it is capped. Um, and we're getting through that contract. Excellent. And it will be closed. And Jake? Did I see a notice in the newspaper that DOT is actually starting cleanup on this site next door? I didn't see that notice. Yeah, they did a ENF. The one at the bottom of the hill? Probably. Uh -huh. what did, where did you see it? Legal notices. <coughs> really? Yes, it says it was, starting, when? it was doing an environmental notification. When? Uh, my goodness, morning or yesterday morning. Okay, so it was in the Gazette? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll look for that. Yeah, make sure. Um, Um, MJ and I started participating in an activity on the, uh, loc on the Solid Waste Reuse Committee in 2009, and we came up with a plan to increase the recycling, to, uh, to increase recycling and reuse in the landfill. We wrote a dream propo 
proposal, what we called the dream proposal, which was circulated with the board, the board supported it. Um, but the particular em uh, emphasis was on supporting and increasing recycling events. Um, and over the last few years, this particular committee has done a great job on getting, of having volunteers on the committee and increasing recycling events and uh, reuse events as well. Um, Susan Waite is a part-time person that's been hired uh, in a, uh, to work on this um, with uh, Karen's, um, uh, whatever it's called, is it an administrative app, app uh, leave or gone or? She no longer works for the city. Okay. And so Karen um, is a temporary employee. Susan. Susan. I mean, Susan is a temporary employee working on the project. So she's been having very good meetings. She's had lots of enthusiasm, really good. There are people on the committee that firmly believe that a reuse facility is what they really want. And even though MJ and I have over the years explained all the different characteristics, and then Susan had another meeting with me, I don't know if you want to talk about that now. Sure, we can. Yeah. About making it clear again to Susan about the inappropriateness of the Locust Street facility for a reuse facility because of the amount of traffic and the limited space. Amongst other things, a building that probably should be condemned. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's literally no roof left on yeah. it. Um, it's not ADA accessible. Mm -hmm. To make it work, how would you open up the DPW yard to citizens and traffic when we try to secure it on weekends so they're not going out back? Because that's that reuse shed would be in our alley where it goes out back to our mm -hmm. parking lot, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they have full access to the facility too. But the I think the costs were under, very much underestimated on the project, and um, I think the Glendale Road facility has now the space to do something up there. Now that Solid Waste Solutions is no longer running the landfill, their compactor units are gone, the recycling units are gone. It's opened up the space quite a bit. In the future, the scale will be sold and the scale house will disappear also. So there's going to be some nice real estate up there currently and in the future also. And the conversation with Susan was if people really wanted to do a reuse, this is a great facility to do it, and it will encourage them to go out there and not be part of a drop-off waste stream. And uh, my concern is that seeing how it works in other communities is that it needs to be staffed on a full-time level to make sure that we don't receive unnecessary items. And is that volunteer staff going to be here all the time to do it and to make it work? And what happens when that staff isn't here or disappears? What are we left with? Plus also here, the stopping of traffic. Has anyone ever been here on a Saturday or any busy day? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you have 10, 15 people leaving their cars to go into a swap facility or a reuse facility Where's the traffic going to go? It's going to be backed out into Locust Street trying to get in here. So this is not the facility to have one mm -hmm. uh, based on the, our current traffic flow and traffic patterns that we have here. That's my take on it. And MJ and I totally agree and have mentioned this several times. And we're just having a reprise of this issue because of a couple new members on the committee. And I think my concern, and, and I'll see what MJ thinks about it, is that there is no money available right now for putting into a facility, even at the Glendale Road. Okay, that's fine for right now. We have an active volunteer group that is putting on events. I would like to see this continue. And I think that the only issue is that there are several people threatening to leave the committee because we don't have a reuse facility. And as I explained to Susan, in a conversation, um, you need to be totally committed to reuse and recycling however it occurs. Mm -hmm. And so I guess I'm just explaining all this to the board. Uh, you know, it, it is frustrating to go to meetings where, where this is con it has been brought up more than one time during the year. Um, and we've explained it, and but it comes up again. And I don't want to lose volunteers, mm -hmm. and I don't want to stop the events. So I guess that's my primary commitment. I'm just opening up for the comments and staff comments. Do we continue having this um, subcommittee? I'd like to not see it go away, but... Um, yeah, 
they considered Glendale? <coughs> These folks who are here committee. Well, I, it's going to be on the discussion for October, I believe. So they haven't looked at it and rejected it? We have mentioned it, but okay. they're not keen on it. They want it here. Okay. So. But it doesn't matter because there's no money for it anyway. So. No, but at least it's there. I know. I know. Yeah. So I don't know how to draw the picture any more than that. I mean, I don't know that we want to phase back from it. And Susan's doing a great job. So it just might be that, I don't know, maybe we alternate going to meetings or something like that. It's been hard for MJ because of her other commitments and her new change in status. Um, can we have a committee without a board attendance? I suppose we could. Um, but, I mean, we still will have the committee, but... I, I think that the, the committee sometimes has gotten the sense that there might be some openness to looking at, you know, the three bays that we have. There's been some discussion about maybe we organize it a little better and we can sort through it. And and I can understand that they've had the sense that, that we've offered up the opportunity to look at that. Mm -hmm. Because we have. I mean, we have looked at it. And mm -hmm. it, it feels like, I mean, I think my concern is, is that I think I get a pretty clear and consistent message from Ned um, I'm not sure that, that everyone else that I've spoken to in the, uh, at the department um, have, have shut the door so firmly on having something here. So I'll share that with you then. Okay. Just to say. Well, you talked to Jim, you talked to Rich Parcelletti, everyone's pretty firm about it not being here. Terry Colhane thinks we should do something here. Mm -hmm. The last conversation I had with Terry. Well, and I, and I certainly agree with you that the Saturday, you know, that the Saturday issue with the amount of traffic here is certainly a concern. I think we're all sort of trying to see how this year pans out financially. with financially, mm -hmm. because quite honestly, I don't know what our decisions are going to be as we approach the end of the year, because whether or not we're on projections, we haven't heard any updates on those lately. So I, guess I, I don't have any for you, but when we created the budget, we were looking at a surplus at the end of the year of approximately $20,000 out of a $650,000 budget. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a lot of wiggle room in it and a lot of assumptions. So I guess I'm, I'm curious on, on how our revenue stream is now that we're, you know, now that we're only here and the, mm -hmm. the uh, Glendale site is closed, we're uh, accepting anything except for difficult to handle late. That would be great to, to hear an update on that. So. And it would make sense to sort of take a look at it after mm -hmm. the first quarter, so something mm -hmm. that I was expecting to hear those numbers in October. Yeah. And all I hear is, you know, anecdotal yeah. from residents in terms of where they're bringing their trash. Okay, good. Um, Did that answer your question, Rob? Did you get that? I mean, do other folks have other? I, I um, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I am. I wonder, have, have uh, the members of the committee, have they been to other communities where there yeah. are these sorts of things? Yes. So yes. they know what they look like, they yes. know what the scale is. Yes. Yes. Um, and the issue of staffing, I suppose if, it, if the building is appropriate, that there. this is the one we approve mattresses and television sets and stuff, mm -hmm. I presume that one. So I don't know how much it would cost to make that thing uh, appropriate. Is there lights in here? There's electricity there. Are there lights in the building? There is electricity in the office space that Solidly Solutions used. Okay. But uh, that's part of the big, so as you drive in, I'm talking about the big building to the left. Right. At the very far end of it, closest to the online landfill, or what we know as the online landfill, is a, an enclosed shop area. Oh, I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. The rest of it is all open. Barn space. Yes, yeah, wide open. There's no door on the front of it. There is. There is? Mm -hmm. It's always yeah. wide open when I see it. No, I'm talking about the overall building. Oh, the, the, with the porch. It's only got three walls. Right. But as you get further to your east, yeah. there is an enclosed building. Okay. But I mean, wouldn't the stuff be in that entire building? I can imagine a review center would you need more than a small, more than a space this big. Well, currently that open space is used for mattresses, several hundred of them, before we have enough to move off-site in a single load. And that's going to continue to be the case? Yeah. Oh. It's, it's used for CRTs, right. computer screens, yeah. television sets that get picked up on a regular basis. Uh, for some bulger store there, we used to do latex paint collection there, which we don't do now. 
So it has a multiple uses. Could it be consolidated and one open bay be left open for a reuse? Need to explore that. So, okay. So, so my other part of this is that would this be a part-time thing that would the staff that we have there already could also operate? Because otherwise, I, I wouldn't trust this thing being volunteer. Oh, no, 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 no. We would have to hire more people. Would we? And I estimated that to be about sixty thousand dollars minimum. I mean, even if it's a part-time person with part-time hours, by the time you look into other aspects of, of um, employee costs and so on. All the gatekeepers are part-time, non-benefited employees. We currently pay them a little under thirteen dollars an hour each. Mm -hmm. They typically work in four-hour shifts. Mm -hmm. So, do you think the gate gatekeepers would be a sufficient? Um, we might have to hire a couple more mm -hmm. because currently on Saturday all 12 are working both facilities. Yeah, right. Okay. And how many hours a week or actually how many hours a year is, the, uh, is that drop off site used for that? Uh, both the Every Saturday. Saturday seven, to four. 7 to 4. Every Saturday, unless it's a major holiday. Well, I think this is some more stuff that I can that we can take to them. Mm -hmm. So this is a good start. Then we're happy to just give them a tour out there and show them what's out there if they haven't mm -hmm. seen it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Can I just say something quick? Oh, of course. Well, I mean, because I was on the task force, and I think the issue of using the Glendale Road site for that pur purpose was the issue that came up, and I'm not saying I'm opposed to this, so I don't want you to think I am, but the issue was that because of its distance out of town, there's no bus route there. It's not easily accessible to residents and I'm not you know I'm not saying it isn't a good place to start something like this but I think that ultimately it's also more appealing to look for something that I just think about the people who live downtown who don't have cars who could probably benefit from using the reuse center or moving in and out and they have stuff and they're leaving it and it's just I'm thinking having a place that's more accessible for them but it's true I just we wanted to make that comment that for, yeah, and we, that's been a consideration and in all we're the talking discussions about that we've private had. raising funds right all of that so I, I totally hear you and, and understand right okay but thanks okay um private way service oh, just that if you're going to do a tour out there I'd like to go sure you haven't been to the landfill Oh, yeah, but I, I can't picture what's open, what's closed, the office building. We can you can that. And bring some mattresses with you. Free? <laughs> no, 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 no. No way. $20? Depending on the size. Yeah. 10 to 20. All right, private yeah. survey work. Private way survey work. So, so far the City Council has appropriated $22,800 towards the surveying services for private ways. As part of the Council discussion about whether or not they should put the ballot question on, it came up as to what work the level is required, what if it fails the ballot question, and one of our arguments we made is that no matter what, if they don't, if the ballot question fails or they don't become private ways, or public ways, excuse me, most of these streets have city utilities on them that we have no easements for. Mm -hmm. So if they were to remain private ways, we should get proper easements in place to maintain them and know exactly what we have out there. We know what's in the ground, just that there is no easement or record for it. <clears throat> so with that conversation and talking with the mayor about additional funds that we need, because we're almost out of money now, and the city contributing more money from the general fund, he asked that I bring it to the board the idea of a shared program between sewer and water enterprise funds and the city general fund that would include drains because we have drains in some of these private ways also mm -hmm. and the roadway system which is considered to be part of the general system mm -hmm. that there would be a shared expense for the survey services for crafting all these uh, legal documents to be recorded at the registry. So I told them I would bring that up to the Board of mm -hmm. Public Works and so our current estimate is about $100,000 to go through all the survey services for the 40 plus private ways that we identify that we want to accept. And so what I'm looking for is a $25,000 contribution from uh, a sewer and a $25,000 from water enterprise funds to move this process along. 
and I'd ask the city to come up with $26,200, which would equate to their 50% share. Factoring the 24000 that's already out there? The twenty three eight. Yeah. That's why I said twenty six two. <clears throat> Seems like a reasonable request. It does to me too. Uh, as Mary McCarthy pointed out pretty well, even if we don't, well, first of all, most of them we are going to accept it public way. Um, and even the ones that we may not, uh, some of them do have. Oh yeah, yeah, almost, so, almost all. Right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Whether we um, take that survey information and turn it into an easement for utilities only, or we take it and turn it into a new layout for a street, I think that the survey work has to get done. So what I would ask you to do is look at a fifty percent share of the survey services up to a maximum of fifty thousand dollars at this point. That way, if it's only comes to seventy-two thousand to do it, you've already committed fifty. I want to make sure that there's that percentage share. What percentage of the private ways is, would that cover? Because seventy, it seems like that'd be a very small percentage of the public way, private ways going to public ways. The seventy-two thousand dollars. No, the seventy-two came up as general number. What benefit? It is only seventy-two. I want to make sure that the enterprise fund didn't commit 50, and the city is going to get away with 22,000 of it. Okay, so those are just proposed amounts. But of, okay, this is what I'm hearing you say that you, we have $23,000. The city has $23,000 left. 800? Or? No, they have 23800 that they appropriated to it from the city council. We've expended a large majority of that money in coming to a screeching halt without other funds. Right. So I've asked the mayor to come up with another request to equate to a $50,000 maximum from the city, and I'm looking for the sewer enterprise fund for a total $50,000 maximum also. Mm -hmm. If it's less than that, our percentage share, because it's a 50% share, our costs will be less. But will this cover, will this cover all the outstanding private ways that we voted to become public. Well, we believe it will. Oh, I thought, okay. Wow, I thought it was going to run more expensive. Me too. Yeah. Well, you said that a total of 100000 And you you were guessing uh, six months ago maybe more than that. But yes, right. exactly. What, but what, what you discovered in doing some of the surveys, it's 100000 is real. Yeah, I mean, like, um, I think, I think Strawberry Hill, because it was fairly well documented, was $2,000, $2,200. Versus Edward Square, which is a little more complicated, I think ranged almost three thousand dollars. So you take that forty streets times three thousand. I mean, some are going to be very cheap to do because the plans are already in the registry of deeds, like service center. The plans recorded, so basically the survey has to copy it, stamp it, and we get it to the city council. That, that might be a five hundred thousand dollar plan. So they're going to fluctuate a little bit all over the map. There could be some very you know, complicated long surveys like um, Clark Street. Clark Street will probably be. Um, actually, Pine Valley is pretty clear because we already have easements out there for sewer and water that cover up to 30 feet in width. But yeah. you, you basically have a whole sewer project through Clark Street. That, you guys have something for that. I, I don't know what we have out there. Okay. Because I mean, that whole trunk line went through there when right. I was a kid. You the did survey before through, you put the trunk line. The trunk line, line went through the back yards, not down Clark itself. Right, right. So it was a cross country run from Ryan Road School area. Right. When you were a kid, do you remember seeing a survey crew out there? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. there was a survey trailer, right. and it was there for a long time, and there were earth movers and bulldozers and manholes. Well, did you see a guy looking through a telescope? Yes, I did. And there was another guy holding a And his name screen. was George Washington. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. And Jay, did we answer your question? No. Um, um, <laughs> My question was that I was going to suggest that when you have this conversation with the mayor saying that we would contribute up to 50%, that it should be in the same breath with that first, that item from number one. Okay. Yes, I was thinking that too. 
I do have a monthly update with the mayor, so I'll make sure that's brought up. So that uh, that there's some um, some I I this this who pays for what this general fund enterprise fund is something that I think that should be on the front burner for us. I think we're clarifying it as we go along. I know, but in some ways it's scary. But those are those are similar questions. Right? Yes, I agree. Are these? Is this a proposal, or is this is just a discussion, and then you'll bring the proposal to the this board? This is a proposal to the board so that we can keep the process moving. Okay, so it's not a, it's not something we're voting on. I was hoping that you would say yes, that I could expend it. Okay. I mean, typically, in my role as director, I have. I can expend that. Mm -hmm. It's we have line items for it in our O and M for right. architectural engineering services. So I'm also looking for your blessing that you agree to this concept. Okay, would you it's like to like Obama right. and the whole Syria yeah, thing, really. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> would anybody like to make a proposal to help Ned out of this? Help would, me out of this, Laura. I would like to make. I move that we authorize Ned to um, offer up up to a 50 percent share of. Uh, funds from 25% from the water enterprise, 25% from the sewer enterprise to serve as matching funds to the cost of the survey work for the private way resolution. Up to a maximum of $50,000. Up to a maximum of $50,000. Thank Second. you. Second. Okay. Nicely done. Any comments? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, can I ask a question relative to that, though? If this doesn't move forward and if we do get stalled a little with the survey work and moving them through into a public way, it just means that we just keep plowing it because we've made that decision. That's correct. Okay, so uh, I've had also had a discussion with the surveyor about committing his time before the snow flies to do all the field work so that during the winter time we're doing the paperwork. Nice. I don't want to wait till spring then start survey work. I, I want this all wrapped up by next spring. That's my goal. Be amazing. Oh my amazing. Amazing. <laughs> that means we have time for more subcommittee work. <laughs> this was <laughs> all that time that I've been Your putting into this for the last was, 10 years. Yeah, you worked hard on it. It was a fun <laughs> adventure. You got to see the city. We did. It's, it's good. You know, and, and chocolate was strong. Oh, we did uh -huh. have and we got to sort of engage with the public in a way that we don't often get to. Well, it was great. Right. It really yeah. was. I, oh. mean, I loved it. I, yeah. I enjoyed it. Having said that, do you have any other comments for today? No, I don't think so. You sound sad. No, I'm not sad. Okay. Chris? I saw Blue Heron down on the, on the river this morning. Okay. Flying about that high above the water. Wow. I saw. I forgot to say, I did my, my hiking bike is over there. So I uh, on, on the bike after my hike, I I. Uh, they encourage your car. Uh, well, I wasn't anywhere near the car at that point, but I almost <laughs> hit a deer with my bicycle. Wow. That was pretty amazing. I started ringing my bell, and the thing was like. <laughs> you know, you know, I wasn't making a lot of noise, and uh, finally moved out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that wasn't in Northampton, so Just some quick updates. Um, the Elm Street, North Elm Street sidewalks from Hatfield Street up to Bridge Road. Mm -hmm. Their base course went down today, so that project is starting to look kind of finished at this point. Uh, Chester Street water line project. I believe that they'll stop laying pipes sometime tomorrow. They're scheduled to do paving out there also tomorrow, just so you're aware of that. So that project is going to be winding down soon. Um, we're doing an emergency dig on Hatfield Street between Cook and Bridge Road mm. down at the low point. Mm -hmm. There's a culvert system down there that is, it's, it's a 30 inch diameter culvert that is, the end of it is 90% full of debris. Oh. Were these the guys who came in like With six months ago? Yeah. 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 They must be happy then. Something like that. Yeah, that's when they were talking about the laser. Yeah. Yeah, right, exactly. So we're in the process of opening up that culvert system. We got permission from the uh, the tribal community to Army Corps of Engineers to Conservation Commission as an emergency order. The tribal community? Yeah. Indian land. That's Indian land? Yes. Wow. They said it wasn't in their jurisdiction, but we have to check with them as part of the process. Wow. So. What, what nation? Um, I'd have to look at the paperwork. Chief Cook. I think, I think the... Uh, Paperwork came from Ohio. Yeah. Wow. So, 
Anyways, interesting little project that should be wrapped up at some point this week also. Nice to have no rain this week that it's happening yeah. too. Do you have to replace the culvert or just no. clean it just out? Just cleaning it out. Like I said, it's, a, it's almost a three foot diameter culvert and there's about this much left to the top of it. Wow. That's pretty chuck full of material. A lot of water upstream from that culvert. There sure is a lot of water upstream of that. So we think actually it came down during Hurricane Irene and it was just noticed lately. It's not a new landfill then. Okay. So, so just a quick a update on construction projects in the city. Oh, great. Yeah. Jerry, you have anything? No. Jay? Yes. Um, I am sitting on the Clean Energy Working Group in Northampton, and I will share with you that um, they had an Energy 101 forum a couple weeks ago, and they're having an Energy 201 forum on October, mm, yeah, that Wednesday, the same day as our... 18th? No, no, no. Oh, wait. Well, the 11th. Oh, right. It's the 9th. The 11th is a It's the 9th. So, the 9th. Um, but I want to share with you that some of the things that they're looking at is, has to do with our infrastructure. What they're doing a little poll right now, asking us what we want more information on. One of the options is, can we install photovoltaics on the landfill? Are you in the loop on any of this, Ned? We should probably get you in the loop on this. Uh, LED lighting uh, in the downtown area, uh, the use of the dams for hydroelectric power. Um, so you might want to, we might want to connect you with Chris Mason to at least make sure that you're okay. aware of these conversations that are going on out there. Okay. Oh, and the aerobic digester, looking at aerobic digesters, anaerobic digester. So it's, if the idea the is... One that was going to be like in Hadley or... It's focused on Northampton. The idea is to get an engaged, uh, interested group of people who are interested in clean energy for the city and to figure out what are the possibilities. So we're, we've got some sort of grant from Mass, some clean energy, CCEC. Mass, no, Mass. higher up than that, CCEC. Anyways, I will... CCEC. No, no, it's higher than that. It's like a state agency. <coughs> Anyways, I'll send you guys out the links to it so what's, you can take a look So what's this group again? It's the Clean Energy Working Group. I know, but is it like just neighborhood volunteers? No, it's, uh, Chris Mason the sustainability uh, mm -hmm. officer for the city applied for Northampton to be, to have this happen. Mm -hmm. and Northampton was awarded the a grant for doing a it. Grant. So it's a citizen's group. It's not a citizen's group. It looks there's some engineering type. I'm not explaining this well. I'm going to s let you guys know that there's something going on out there with clean energy. And I'll send yeah, you the link. It's a little bit fuzzy. It's, well, they're trying to figure out what they should. They're trying to get citizen input. Mm -hmm. um, so there there is a working group, and we're supposed to be reaching out to uh, our our circles to let people know about this. Like the Solarize group is it? Because he did that as well. The the. Right, but this seems to have a lot more engineering and sort of higher level infrastructure looking at that in terms of microgrids in, in neighborhoods and, uh, like I said, the, the discussion about the anaerobic digestion as, a, you know, as a, an energy source, a clean, clean energy source. So let me, I will commit to send you guys all up the link and you can look at There's actually really good information on the website, the Northampton website, but okay. I wanted to make you aware of that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to just put on the table was an update on what's up with the Clement Street Bridge. I know the Bay State Village Association is very interested in seeing where we might be in terms of doing something so that it doesn't end up closed again. Okay. And I know that you met with them. Were you at the meeting? I was. Yeah. Yeah, it, was a good, it was a good meeting. It was a good um, meeting. Just so you know, our capital improvements for FY15 are due on Tuesday next week. And in that, I have a line item for Clem Street Bridge for $500,000. I'm not sure what the Capital Improvements Committee is going to do with that request, but I did state that I would put it in there. I think that's adequate enough money to bring the repairs up to a standard again. That will be five to ten years before we have to do something else again. Sounds like a toll bridge. Um, I, I also think that um, there's a group of people that are interested in doing something, and I think they're probably going to be looking at doing historic um, infrastructure grant something. So I know that they're, they've, they've dug in a little bit. It seems like there's something there. Right, and they met last night, and what I committed to them is, is that I, I knew that 
it looks like they need some historic study done to see whether or not it can be put. It's eligible to be on the historic register, but it hasn't gone through the process of oh, putting really? it on the historic register. Okay. Is what I understood from the conversation last night. So right. I is direct, Diane Volker there? Uh, Diane was not. She knows the most about it. Okay. But uh, I directed them to uh, community preservation uh, CPA money. One other thing that's on my mind, but I can't remember what it is. Well, we can circle back. Thank David you. has a question. Smith did a photo throw page study on the landfill mm -hmm. two or three years ago. Two years ago, I think, if I remember right. And, they, and I think that was a good study. Mm -hmm. It was a good study. Our concern at the moment is that it is a freshly closed landfill, number two, number one. It's going to incur settlement. How much that settlement is, we don't know yet, versus the ones that they're putting uh, PV arrays on now have been capped for a number of years and substantially settled, subsided. I hate to think that in, you know, five years, these solar arrays are like that. Disarrayed. Disarrayed. <laughs> Very good. Um, I did have Chris Mason look at the Fedora parcel next door, the horse field. Mm. He thought that would be a prime place to put a small one to one and a half megabyte facility out there. Uh, hasn't gained any traction, hasn't been before the board yet. Obviously, we always discuss when the landfill closed. We'll start the process of the conversation mm -hmm. of what we're going to do with the properties out there. Mm -hmm. We have Fedora's property. There's also a building lot near Route 66 mm -hmm. that's owned by the Solid Waste Enterprise Fund mm -hmm. to do something with. So, you know, at some point, those conversations need to happen. Mm -hmm. Maybe the, during the course of the winter, what we want to do. Okay. I remember oh, you remembered your other one? Okay. Yeah, and this is a echoing something that Jim said the last time we were here. That he's, I believe, at the Community Preservation Committee on October 2nd, and he asked that some of us make an effort to attend. Oh, this is the last part of it? The last part. part. And it's part a, he sent out a timing, timing on that, which was in my book. Um, my book. Were you asking about it or? No, or? I just wanted to remind us that if we could to attend because I know he, he was asking us to do that. Where is it going to be? It's going to be in the council, council chambers, chambers typically, or the hearing on one of the two. Uh, do you know what time? I'm going to tell you in just about two oh. seconds. So the yeah, he sent us. Seven o'clock, he said. Seven. So my understanding is that the mayor will be there to support the project, and he was looking for a presence from the board mm -hmm. to support the project right. also. I have it in my list to try to do. Okay. David? Nothing. Nothing? Okay. Well, I could talk about coyotes to... Hey, where was the bobcat? I heard on the radio today that there was a bobcat. There's a picture in the paper. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Who was it? Right, right, right. I thought so. Um, <laughs> we've seen the bobcat, but not recently. I just want to... I'll just talk about... Flood damage. I asked my partner and husband, Barry Steve, to wrote a book on flood control. If he had any handouts, I'm probably just going to give you this. You probably don't care because it's like 40 years ago. But designing against flood damage, this article, he wrote a book on flood control. So wow, cool. Wow. That that was that was like I bet you there's a conversation about stormwater in there. I'm sure there is. <laughs> <laughs> We've been chatting about it. So, anyway. Nice. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Great, thank you very much everyone.